So this morning I've been asked to present on uh, yoga and sensuality, obviously because we are in God's house. Um, a lot of things will not be explicit. All right. So <clears throat> let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you have given to us uh, where we can see the deceptions and be aware of it and be away from it. At the same time, also help, the help our loved ones also, Father, uh, to come out of darkness, to come out of deception into your marvelous light. And uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for the spirit of prophecy uh, through which we can see the activities of the enemy, the deceptions of the enemy. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to understand these things um, through your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, yesterday we were looking at the gender, the gender ideology, and we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Genesis 5, verse 2, that God created man, male and female, in his image. Full stop. Then we saw... Uh, this text from the ancient uh, Hindu scriptures, uh, it's called Yajur Veda, and it says Natasya Pratima Asti, which means uh, there is no image of Shiva. Okay, so there is no image of Shiva. Um, so just to let you know, Hinduism is very complex. Uh, like I said yesterday, there is no proper starting point, there's no proper ending point, you just keep rounding in circle, 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 and then basically, like I said, you lose your mind. Um, so when I started researching on these topics, I really began to empathize our Hindu brothers and sisters, because uh, unfortunately they are caught up in the web, in the web of deception, and shunned away from the love of God. And uh, it actually stirred up a lot of uh, um, you know, empathy towards them that we have to pray for them more. And I have to uh, be more understanding towards them rather than just judging them. Oh, you're idol worshippers. You bow down before a stone. Um, some of, th not some of them, there's a practice in Hinduism where people drink the urine of the cow. Uh, because yes, 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 they, they do that in the mornings because in Hinduism it gives a lot of uh, wisdom and, and, and also it is healthy, it's like a health drink. So as Christians, as growing, you know, growing up in a Christian community, uh, you know, we used to make fun of these Hindus, right? But then after reading many of their writings or scriptures, their scriptures, I felt very sorry for them. Yeah. I mean, it happens in the Hindu temples, even in the U.S. as well, because cow is considered as holy in Hinduism. And um, so everything from the cow is useful for humanity. So that's the understanding. Cow is a goddess. So if you go to India, if a cow is uh, crossing the street, you have to stop your car, let it cross, and then you go on. Then you, move. you can't... Uh, you know, you can't uh, be cruel to the cow because cow is a goddess. Okay, so there is no image of him. And we saw this uh, quotation. Uh, this is from nih.gov, okay? And um, it says, so they published that Sanskrit is one of the oldest languages in the world. Sanskrit is the um, the, it's the Indian spiritual language, uh, like Latin is for Rome, or Vatican. Likewise, Sanskrit is the in, uh, Indian spiritual language. All of the chanting that people do in the West for yoga, it's all based on, based from Sanskrit. It's all Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is one of the oldest uh, languages in the world and is known to use three genders masculine, feminine, and gender neutral. So you see Hinduism is in the US, right? The concept of uh, Tritya Prakriti or Napumsaka has been an integral part of the Hindu mythology. What it means is the third gender or gender neutral. Uh, it's part and parcel of the Hindu mythology, folklore, epic, uh, 
um, an early Vedic, Vedic is again Hindu writings, and Puranic, uh, Purana means stories, uh, Puranic literatures. So I paused at this slide la uh, yesterday evening. So, <clears throat> so these are two different deities in Hinduism. Uh, the one on the right side, towards your right, that is uh, Shiva. And uh, as you can see, he carries a uh, pitchfork. Uh, if you see in the Hollywood movies, they show demons and devils with a tail and have a pitchfork, right? So that's exactly how uh, Shiva is depicted with a pitch pitchfork in Hinduism. Uh, that's one of the ways he's depicted, or, or one of the ways, yeah, one of the ways he's depicted. And uh, have you heard of the river Ganges? Yes. Yeah. So it is believed in Hinduism, the river Ganges flows from Shiva. As you can see on the top and the hair, there is, they believe that it's a goddess. The river is a goddess. And it flows from Shiva and there's always a serpent around him, coiled serpent, uh, coiled around him. And um, you can see that there is a drum, right? Um, <clears throat> right? So the music in, uh, in ancient Hin India, it's called as uh, Carnatic music, and there are eight or octaves like Sare, Gama, Pada, Nisa. So Hinduism teaches that those those octave octaves they came from the drum of Shiva. Now, when we look into the Bible, which being, where Bible says a God says, on the day you were created, pipe and timbrel was created for you. Lucifer, right? So, the drum is also called as a timbrel. When we look into Jewish encyclopedia, I don't have a screenshot here. When we look into Jewish encyclopedia, it calls the drum as a tablet or a timbrel. And then, have you seen uh, people, like if in ancient India, um, like pictures or videos uh, where people use uh, flute, snake charmers, right? So pipe and timbrel, pipe is also a flute, and then we have a serpent around Shiva, always, and uh, the flute is used to mesmerize a snake, especially the cobra. So it's not the music, some people say, because uh, snakes cannot hear, they can just feel, but it's just the way the, the charmer moves the flute that's what mesmerizes the cobra. And it's not just any serpent, specifically cobra. And it's interesting, God tells us in the new heaven and new earth that the cobra will still continue to... Hmm? Yeah, slither, slither, yeah, slither. Even in new heaven and new earth. In other words, uh, the cobra will not get back its wings. Right? So... <coughs> It's not a rattlesnake, it's not any other snake, it's specifically cobra. And that's the uh, cobra is what is always coiled around Shiva. So you see the parallels, right? See the parallels? Um, so on the left is Vishnu. Uh, <clears throat> so there are three main deities in Hinduism. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the organizer, Shiva, the destroyer. So in the Bible, Vishnu. Vishnu, yeah, V-I-S-H-N-U, Vishnu. Okay, so creator, originator, destroyer. And Shiva is the destroyer. In the Bible, there is a being who is called as a destroyer, the enemy. Okay, but then, then what about the other two? Brahma, Vishnu, what about the, those two? Uh, uncle uh, always tells me that there's only one temple for Brahma in all of India. Right, uncle? Two. Now there are two. Originally, it was only one. Oh, okay. So for the creator God in Hinduism, there is two temples now, whereas for Vishnu and Shiva, there are like over 100 temples. However, when we look deep into Hinduism, Hinduism teaches that all three are the same person. It's very interesting, you know why? Because um, many actually couple of thousands of years ago, I should say, there used to be uh, wars always between Shaivites and Vaishnavites, that is uh, Shiva devotees and Vishnu devotees. 
So Shiva devotees will say, Shiva is the greatest God. Vishnu devotees will say, he is the greatest God. And they used to actually kill each other for that. And even now, there are Hindus who fight for the greatness of their respective gods. Even now. However, behind the scenes, it's the same person. But just projecting himself as a goddess, a god, Vishnu, Shiva, all of that. But it's the same person. Alright, so Vishnu... Um, so, according to Hindu mythology, uh, Vishnu um, takes the form of a woman, Mohini, called as Mohini, and uh, Mohini seduces Shiva. And they both have a relationship, and through their relationship, a child is born. So basically, Vishnu changes his gender to a woman, or female and then uh, you know they have intimacy physical intimacy and the child is a certain child is born um, so in Hinduism it is very common uh, in terms of transsexualism male to female female to male <clears throat> the female to male is not that common but the male to female is common in Hinduism so um, if you want to do some research, in, in case you're interested, uh, these are some of the places where uh, transgenders are mentioned um, or transsexualism is mentioned in Hinduism. And uh, Shiva is also called as Ardha Narishwara or Ardha Narishwara. Ardha means half, uh, I mean in other words, half male and half woman. He's androgynous. Uh, if you have seen Baphomet statue, Baphomet is also androgynous. Basically, it's the same person, different names in different geographical locations, same deception. So, <coughs> this is a, uh, a statue in South India, and uh, so here is depicted as. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. So, in the next slide, we'll be seeing the statue of Shiva half a woman and half male and um, sure <clears throat> again there's always a serpent around his neck or coil around him and uh, so one part is dressed up as a woman the other side is dressed up as a male and then th someone mentioned about CERN yesterday I don't know if the brother or sister is here today Anyway, so this is the um, statue of Shiva right outside CERN. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, one side is the male and the other side is female. And there's also a cobra on the left side, right be beneath his uh, one of his uh, 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 palms. So there's a cobra. And then as always, at the feet, at his feet is the uh, male child but now what they say is it's a demon it's a dwarf a dwarf of ignorance whereas Shiva is all wise and he's actually crushing the dwarf of ignorance that's what they say uh, in the past it used to be like a, uh, a child a male it is a male child but now just to make it more acceptable because people are very sensitive nowadays they don't want to show a god who is killing a child uh, so they say it's a dwarf of ignorance, whereas Shiva is uh, knowledge. And this uh, statue is called Nataraja statue. And if you go to any Indian restaurant, you will see the statue. Um, <coughs> you will notice it. And um, and uh, in this uh, form of Shiva, he is called as the Lord of the Dance. Uh, Lord of yeah, Lord of the Dance. So. And then he has the dreadlocks on the side. So that's his dreadlocks. And also, if you look at it closely, I don't think you can see it in this image. He's, there's a skull on his uh, forehead. And this is kept outside CERN. And like I said, you can see um, this statue, this idol, in all of the, almost all of the Indian restaurants, if it's owned by a Hindu especially. Indian movies attract millions around the world and that number looks set to grow, right? Bollywood movies have tremendous influence in the West, yeah? <coughs> so
So you don't have the same kind of influence from movies coming from Korea or Japan or Africa or China, but Indian movies, Bollywood movies, have tremendous influence because the West loves the colors and the saris and the the food and all of that. So it's a whole, you know, a package of attraction that is presented, but behind that, there is it's deception. There's a trap behind that. Glamour, glitz, and artificially light skin. It's a very important topic, actually. Uh, Bollywood stars in their own racism now. So, how many of you have seen Bollywood movies? You've seen one? Did you see a dark-skinned person in a movie? Yes. It's a huge industry in India where a person who is dark wants to apply a lot of makeup and look light skin again because dark skin people are looked down upon including myself i've been looked down upon in my own country by my own people for my skin color and it's very common and in my own country indians have called me as ugly because of my skin color uh, obviously we cannot be offended by that we got to be tough so so this used to happen to me from time to time in india um, so therefore, you will not find a Bollywood actor or an actress dark skin, They're always light skin. And obviously, behind all of these divisions and racism, the enemy is present. It is the enemy's influence. In fact, he was the one who caused separation in heaven, right? So he's come down here and he's caused separation here as well. And uh, here is the uh, sculpture. Um, which was built uh, between 5th and 6th century AD, which is around 15, 1600 years before our time. Uh, uh, Shiva again depicted as uh, Ardhanarishwara, that is gender fluid, right? Half male, half woman. And uh, so basically <coughs> they say that because his wife, or sorry, because the woman obeyed him, his teachings, she united with him and she became one with him. So he is half male and half his wife. So this is a sculpture, around 1500 years old sculpture in India, it exists even now. Uh, it's in a place called Elephanta Caves and uh, <clears throat> you can see there's a bull. Okay, so there are Hindu writings where they say even the bull is transsexual. It can be a cow, it can be a bull. So now this architecture, like I said again, this is n nobody came up with this all of a sudden out of the blue. This has been existing for hundreds of years. And uh, what comes to your mind uh, when, it, when we talk about bull or cow? People say holy cow. Yes, that is correct. The golden calf. So if you want to look it up, if you type um, in a golden calf or golden, um, um, in Tamil, we, in one of the South Indian languages called Nandi, um, you will find that people want, there are, there are statues, of mini, miniature idols of the, of the golden, uh, it's not real gold of course now, <laughs> uh, but there are people who purchase it and they keep it in the showcase or they also worship the cow or the ox. In fact, in Shiva temples, um, the, the calf is built outside the uh, main, uh, what they call as inner sanctum. And uh, so the Hindus, I have friends actually, they say that they go they don't have to go all the way into the inner court of their Shiva sanctuary because Shiva, speaking of sanctuaries, Shiva also has a sanctuary structure, which have, which probably are present in September. Uh, the, the, so the basically, the Shiva structure, uh, a temple structure is all about self. Every article in the Shiva sanctuary points to the human being. What is that? Someone's phone or alarm? Okay. All right. 
So, on the other hand, in the biblical sanctuary, what does every article point to? To Christ. Right. The opposite. In Shiva sanctuary, it's human. So, the Hindus uh, actually can just go and uh, whisper their prayers to the Nandi, that is the cow or the, or the, or the ox, and uh, they believe he will, the statue will send the prayers to, into the inner, uh, inner sanctum where Shiva statue is kept. So this is again a seal from the Harappan civilization which we saw about yesterday briefly, the Indus Valley civilization. And basically the word Hindu, Hindu, H-I-N-D-U, the word is derived from the river called Indu. It flows in the northwest part of India, Indu. So the people who lived on the eastern part of the river of Indu were called as Indus. The Persians called them Indus. So it became Hindus uh, during the British Raj, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so that's where the, the place called, I mean, the name called Hindu came from, from the river Indu, I-N-D-U. Um, so the Indus Valley civilization, um, when, they, when they excavated it, so they also found seals of ox, and um, then this is the most important seal that they excavated. Uh, in my opinion, it is the most important seal because um, this, um, this seal, archaeologists have concluded this is Shiva. And this seal is kept in Delhi Museum in India, even today. It's 5,000 years old, the archaeologists say. And the Harappans worshipped this god. The reason the archaeologists say they worship this god in particular is because all over the excavation sites, this god is found. And he's seated like on a throne. And then um, he is wearing jewelry um, on his uh, arms and also uh, like a, in a V shape. You can see. Um, so the archaeologists say they, it's a jewelry and he has horns, okay? So he's called as the horned deity, like Baphomet has horns. Baphomet came later on, you know, but this is pre-flood we're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> and um, so, so they also say he has three faces. Uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. So there's one face on the right, on the left, and one face facing us, towards us. And then there are animals around him. So that's why he's also called as Lord of the Beasts. And he's also called as the Lord of the Beasts because they believe that he, he uh, controls the beasts. He takes care of the beasts, basically, he says. Uh, uh, Hinduism says. And the Bible tells us that... Uh, the serpent was a wisest among all of the beasts that God created. Okay, close up shot of uh, the Pashupati. So the seal is called as Pashupati. Uh, Pashu means uh, beasts, uh, Pati means Lord, Lord of the beasts. Um, so the archaeologists named it as Pashupati seal, the Lord of the beasts, and this is the close up shot. And then interestingly, in my research, I also found that they, the, the, the archaeologists found, did you want to take a picture? You did? Okay. Okay, awesome. So archaeologists also found this particular, um, um, what is it called, carving. And um, they have declared that this is a priest king. So it's called as a priest king. This, this artifact is also kept in Delhi uh, Museum in India even till today. And do we have a priest king today? Yes, yes. Yes, Jesus is priest and the king in heaven, absolutely. But the Pope claims the same title. He's both the priest and the king. And interestingly, in ancient civilization, of Harappan civilization, there was a priest king for them. So just like how we saw the Linga, Shiva Linga, 5,000 year old structures, Vatican has the same structure. Likewise, the concept of priest king also has been 
adopted by the Vatican and this evolved, this originated from Harappan civilization. Early writings, page 125, but the serpent tempted Eve and she tempted her husband, says the prophet. And they both ate of the forbidden tree. How did she tempt her husband? It is not mentioned in the spread of prophecy, but it is interesting that Sister Y did not say she gave it to her husband. She tempted her husband. So would it be pause? Would it be a, would there be a possibility that uh, she when she interacted with the serpent, the serpent taught how she can seduce her husband? There's a possibility because the serpent is all about evil and how to take down the man. So it's a possibility. But it's interesting. The word is tempted. So Eve tempted her husband, and they both ate of the forbidden tree. James 1.14, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So when we see yoga or Hinduism, it is all about inner nature. Whatever your inner nature is, that needs to be manifested. You don't need a God. Moving on, I'm sure we all know the Beatles or know of the Beatles. So the Beatles went to India. How many of you know that they, they visited India? No? Okay. So they visited India. They had their own, I mean, they, they, uh, they followed this Indian guru. Uh, he is called as Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And the word Mahesh means great God, which also represents Shiva. Okay. Maha means great Ish, means Ishwara, means God. So so in the middle is the Indian is their Indian guru, the guru for the for the Beatles band, and uh, so what did he teach them? Lawlessness. So they went, they learned from India, they brought it to the U.S., to, I mean to the West, and through their music, West also got infected with with the satanic teachings and doctrines and lawlessness. So this is the same guy, the guru, their guru, and he was a is a founder of transcendental meditation. Okay. So you see all of these, like how the snake slithers to the grass. So the Hindu teachings have very quietly entered into the West, and through the West has impacted negatively around the world. Uh, because of the satanic doctrine, this is satanic doctrine because it is completely opposite to God's commands and God's teachings. So that is Maharishi. Not only not only Beatles. If you, if you take uh, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs went to India all the time, and uh, one of his not one of his people say that his dying wish was to give to people that come to his uh, burial. Um, a book called an autobiography of a yogi so everyone who came for his burial got that book or burial or cremation I'm not sure but when they came to see him after his death his dead body whatever so they were gifted that particular book and Steve Jobs was influenced by Hindu teachings perhaps that is why he has his logo the forbidden fruit logo uh, in the Apple devices perhaps who knows um yeah wow that's a good question yeah what attracts the celebrities to hinduism to hinduism right yeah so i would say there are two stages uh, in my observation and uh, so what I've concluded is okay <clears throat> first what they've done is they've diluted God's word here <coughs> excuse me in churches so when the truth when God's word is diluted the human heart is designed to look for something else instead of God's truth so at that time the enemy so enemy dilutes here through human agencies in Christianity 
and then he brings in the other ones to fill in that void from Hinduism. And uh, so when they, when, they, when they speak to the celebrities, so they also use mesmerism techniques to some extent. So there is, in all of us, there is sin by default, right? We have a sin nature, the human nature, sin nature. So when these people come and say, you, you must sin, you must smoke weed, you must fornicate, you must commit adultery. Why? Because there is no law, there is no command. So what happens is the human is like, okay, I am, and also they'll say that you will be free, feel free. You don't need to be bound by commandments. In Hinduism, there are no commandments, right? So feel free, I mean, be liberated. So, so along with that, that is packaged with food and then the colors and then the festivals, different, different Hindu festivals are they're very colorful and they're very attractive. So a person from the West who's not seen all of this, it appeals to the senses, the human senses, are, it appeals to the senses, it also appeals to the human sinful heart and therefore the human is drawn to them. Ultimately, they lose peace of mind, but they, are, they still will be um, addicted. Um, Danny Shelton's granddaughter, uh, she became a Hindu. Danny Shelton's granddaughter became a Hindu through yoga. And uh, Yvonne Lewis contacted me and she asked if I can speak to Danny Shelton's granddaughter. And I agreed. And uh, she asked me some very deep questions, very deep questions with Sanskrit uh, um, words. And um, I took time praying uh, because I understood from the way she asked the questions, the kind of questions she asked me, I could tell she's gone deep into Hinduism. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, you know, I was able to respond to all of each of her questions. And long story short, I got a call from Yvonne and Danny Shelton that she stopped yoga and she got baptized. She's a Sabbath keeper. Yeah. And she came to our conference in April and she shared a testimony. It's on YouTube. And I'll send it to Bliss Haley. That's okay. Haley. H A Y L E Y. Haley. Yeah. She's a. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Mundal. M U N D A L L. Yeah, so I'll, I'll send her testimony to Bliss and Bliss can send the email blast and uh, you, you can watch her testimony. So, <clears throat> and she's a very intelligent person, very intelligent girl and a very nice person, very nice girl. And she got married a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so she came and she shared her testimony and I was so thrilled to have her and her fiance at that time, now he's her husband. And they're a very nice young couple. And um, so there is hope, but I, 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 am, uh, I thought I'll share this because I asked Haley, how did you come out of this? Because it's not easy when a person is hooked to these things. It's very difficult to come out of these practices. Um, I could tell that the prayers from her family, from her family, Danny and his family, a lot of prayers have gone up to the Lord. Uh, to redeem her back into our fold, into his fold. So praise God. So transcendental, the word transcendental means something relating to a spiritual realm or a space inhibited by various spiritual manifestations. So you see, it's very open that when a person practices transcendental meditation, they will have spiritual manifestations. In other words, they will see beings. It gets its name because during the meditation session, the normal thinking process is transcended into a state of pure consciousness. But the reality is the opposite. Conscious is shut. Ability to reason is shut. <laughs> this advanced state is called yogic flying. And those who make it to this state are yogic flyers. TM, which is Transcendental Meditation, short form. TM practitioners advocate that the practice stimulates, a sti it stimulates 
In other words, it's not natural. It has to be stimulated. Stimulates a state of consciousness to reduce stress and promote relaxed awareness. Of course, you know what will happen if the frontal lobe is shut? Your mind stops reasoning. So you will be in a state of bliss. Relaxation. That's what they call relaxation. So basically you stop thinking. While in this uh, state of deep inner peace, people achieve stability, order, and an absence of mental boundaries. In other words, lawlessness. So, it originates from Shiva in this, in this scenario uh, regarding the Beatles. From Shiva to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. The, uh, the guru of Beatles, not only Beatles, there were other bands also who sought uh, his quote-unquote wisdom. And then, so they get influenced and then the, the music industry in the West gets influenced. And through them, Western uh, civilization is influenced or Western population is influenced. And the West is influenced and the whole world is influenced by that. So basically, Satan uses his agents to enter into Christian places and corrupt Christian places and then there's downfall in Christianity and then the whole world is after that infected. You see the flow chart, the strategy, he doesn't come and show up, I'm Satan. Because people will be, you know, they'll try to escape from his clutches. So he wants to deceive as many people as possible and take them into perdition. Okay, Kamadeva is a name of Vishnu in Vishnu Purana and Bhagavata Purana and also Krishna as well as Shiva. See, again and again the same Shiva. So Shiva is also called as Kamadeva. Kama is also a name used for Agni. So what is the word Kama? Okay, Deva means God. What is the word Kama? Kama means sensuality. So there's a God for exercising sensuality without boundaries. And, uh, okay, I'll wait. So Kamadeva is a God of human love and passion who is known to awaken carnal desires among humans. Okay, so there is a God Kamadeva, who is another, which is another form of Shiva, and he is there to awaken carnal desires among humans. Etymologically, Kama means sensual desire, and Deva means a divine being, or God, or Lord, not Lord, God, or divine being. He is regarded <coughs> as the heavenly God of love, who arouses passion and love among those struck by his cosmic arrow. Have you heard of this Cupid? Same. <clears throat> so Cupid came later on, you know, Rome, Roman gods and Cupids, right? But this is ancient times, since ancient times. All right. So Kamadeva is a god of human love and he is there to stir up the carnal desires. In other words, lust. without boundaries. I mean, lust is in itself wrong. Um, Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind, we know this text, because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So his purpose is to create enmities or enemies against God. Carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So you see, step by step, or point by point, we can see that it is impossible to combine Hinduism and true Christianity. You cannot do that. You cannot be a Christian and say, I'm just going to do yoga stretching. You can't do that. <clears throat> okay. Um, I couldn't uh, copy paste, so I took a screenshot from the website, from their website, and I have credited their website. Uh, the last paragraph says, the Lord of, sorry, the God of love is illustrated as a handsome, oh, by the way, 
let's see he is not married to one woman so polygamy is perfectly fine in hinduism uh, I, i have not seen a goddess having multiple husbands or consorts as they say but i've always seen the hindu gods having multiple women around them um so here uh, there are like four women and some hindus say he has two consorts and uh <clears throat> all right so the god of love is illustrated as a handsome youthful winged man with a greenish complexion he carries a special bow made of sugar cane with a string of humming honey bees and arrows that are with five kinds of scented flowers okay scented flowers so scent is also a very important uh, aspect in um promoting the carnal desires uh, they have a whole separate course for that uh, uh, a certain perfume or a certain scent for your wrist certain scent for your chest certain scent for your forehead uh, so it's it's a completely different detailed study on scents to be used in order to stir up lust okay uh <clears throat> so i'll move on so this is a um a fairly recent uh, structure where the god has two wives and uh <coughs> excuse me it is uh, very quickly and openly promoted nowadays in the west as well right uh polygamy next kajuraho so this is called as a kajuraho temple i do not want to show close up shots of this temple again because we are in the lord's house so kajuraho temple hmm? yes a uh, walter actually shows uh, show not in show he actually oh yeah covered it up um so all that is happening in this world today whether male male female female polygamy humans and animals too all of that is in this structure yes it's a temple it's a hindu temple not of god yeah so there's no boundary no com- no bound yeah uh, yes uncle ah wow similar. similar yeah so th- those are things that we cannot show in the church right Correct. yeah so that's why i took the, this picture where you you just see the uh, you know the outline or the structure of the kajuraho temple and uh, what does the word kajuraho mean date palm basically um, the temple is dedicated to lord shiva it is a three dimensional structure has a spectacular set of towers also known as shikaras the temple is decorated so basically this temple is also dedicated for the same god god of this world shiva the bible tells us flee sexual immorality every sin that a man does is outside the body uh, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body so you see this is a religion designed to promote sin you must sin and uh, I, i don't know if um, you have any exposure or, or interaction with people who are in the new age they say you have to get it off your mind and get into your body what it means is if your mind is telling you don't do that don't do this activity just snub it just turn it off and just do whatever your body wants to do so in other words what happens at that time is the human is possessed uh let me see how i can say this you gave me a very tough topic by the way to present at a church <laughs> uh so in in yoga prac you know when people people practice not when people practice yoga 
but there are certain things when a person does in yoga um, the male can absorb absorb milk or water by using his phallus yes so what happens is the four the the frontal lobe is taken over and possessed by some other force so the command center is here for all of us right so when that force sits in the command center and he controls the command center the body does activities that are very abnormal but for the human it'll be like wow i'm having supernatural powers but it's not supernatural i mean it is supernatural powers but it is the power of the enemy which is which makes the body function abnormally Yeah. Body. Yes. Correct. So this possession. So that is yeah. uh, part of yoga. The other uh, uh, other thing uh, that uh, some of the yoga practitioners do is to actually swallow like a six meter cloth, and they let the cloth go all the way to the stomach, and they stir the stomach. They have the power to to move the stomach, so the cloth will clean the stomach. and they'll take over the cloth i'm thinking i can just drink lemon juice simple <laughs> why put 6 meter of cloth inside <laughs> yeah so these things are all not normal that's why sister white wrote right that there are many ways that people have uh, you know healing and uh, prom- but there's only one way that heaven uh, accepts so these things have crept into the west and there are actually videos of especially women um doing these things and they put it or film it and put it on youtube um there are other things also that i don't want to say <coughs> so kundalini yoga kundalini yoga i i did not want to show the video if you are interested you can go and look it up on youtube kundalini yoga um manifestation or something like that and you will see how the women and the men uh have orgasms without any human contact and no contact uh because they are possessed by the demons yes so kundalini is a sanskrit term meaning coiled and it refers to a specific type of meditation that's believed to have the ability to fully awaken your potential for awareness so i also noticed that um, people who are in the alternate lifestyle it's just uh, just an observation from my my personal life i've observed this uh, when a person is either transgender or into homosexual lifestyle uh, if you f- look into their family their parents or a parent or the grandparent would have been involved in witchcraft some form of witchcraft or eastern religions so i'm thinking logically because they are allowing the demons to control their mind probably the body also is being contro- i'm sure the body is controlled of course and then when they in their offspring they have some kind of deformities mentally and physically so i just i that is just an observation that i've noticed for every single person that i have i've come across who who live an alternate lifestyle um their mom or dad or grandparent who's very close to them would have been involved in witchcraft so this is uh, kundalini just a very decent picture uh but if you're interested just out of curiosity you can watch what happens and how these women move their bodies and men also how they move their bodies without human contact just by practicing this kundalini uh yoga and um so in in uh, yoga um they, they historically they believe that um, not only historically even now they believe that the practitioner can see his own organs within so he becomes the microscope his mind becomes the microscope to see what's going on within and also his mind becomes a telescope to see what's in the outer world uh the planets the stars and so forth as a practice yoga again this is something that the demons or the satan 
um, prepares the mind and makes the mind visualize these things which are not perhaps real. <coughs> yes, chakras, that's right. Yeah. So actually, Kamala Harris's um, um, mom is from my city, Chennai, and uh, she is from the upper caste family of Hinduism. Yeah. Excuse me. For the benefit of those online, please use the mic for all comments or questions. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, so yoga teaches that you can see what is within your body and what is in the outer space. As you meditate, your mind will bring to you. You will see in your mind, you'll have visions as what's going on in your body and what's going on in the space. However, the Bible addresses that. In Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21, for the king of Babylon, this is God speaking here. For the king of Babylon stands at the parting of the road, at the fork of the two roads, to use divination. He shakes the arrows, he consults the images, he looks at the liver. So the king of Babylon practiced the same Hinduism, so to speak. And he was able to see his own liver. And the Bible, of course, condemns such practices. Okay, that's okay. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So this is from great controversy. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So in other words, serpent told the woman, you will be awakened. Your eyes will be open. Now the word awaken is very commonly used. But basically what it means is, like I said yesterday, it is shutting down your frontal lobe and uh, activating more of your pineal gland or pineal gland or pineal gland where you have melatonin um, in your body and you are in a state of bliss after that. Excessive melatonin. He declared that they would become like God, possessing greater wisdom. So Shiva is also called as God of wisdom, who stamps, he puts his feet on the dwarf or the child of ignorance. And here it says, possessing greater wisdom than before and being capable of a higher state of existence. Now, Great Controversy was written over 100 years ago. And uh, it's, uh, and, and the Sister White wrote that uh, Satan influenced the woman that um, they would possess greater wisdom than before and being capable of a higher state of existence. Today, all of yoga centers teach that you can become better than who you are. You will have you'll reach a higher state of existence. Almost all of yoga centers, I should say. Um, Eve yielded to temptation, and through her influence, Adam was led into sin. They accepted the words of the serpent that God did not mean what he said. They distrusted their creator and imagined. They imagined that he was restricting their liberty and that 
they might obtain great wisdom and exaltation by transgression, transgressing his law. Now, what the prophet wrote is exactly what being taught today. It's not nothing has changed. So basically, what happened in Eden is being taught in 2023. Nothing has changed. The same formula, same teaching, branding is different. And the same teacher. Romans 1, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And Romans 1, 18, Romans 1, 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Do we have people like that today? Especially in Christianity, we have plenty, right? We can't talk about Hinduism because Hindus, most of them don't know the truth. But in Christianity, most people, most of the pastors, the preachers, leaders, they know the truth. <clears throat> How many of you have seen a clip of, um, um, what's his name, Graham? Not Franklin Graham, it's Billy Graham. Billy Graham saying that you will not surely die. Your thoughts will live forever. It's on YouTube. Billy Graham. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Billy Graham said that, yeah. 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 So that is uh, satanic teaching. But millions of people followed his teachings, unfortunately. So, but the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the whole world knows that there is a God. Uh, last night, uh, Bliss and I, we were talking to a young Chinese gentleman and um, he said the world has gone crazy in the last three he said that the last three years the world has gone crazy um, and he said i believe there's a higher power i believe in the universe he said so obviously bliss said hey come to our church tomorrow and he said i have to work then i told him i'll be back in september i'll come and see you come to the church at the time probably you can learn some new information <laughs> so people he, and he said he's not a christian but he has begun to believe in a higher power because of things that unfolded in the world in the last three years. Verse 20, Romans 1, for since, sorry, verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. A lot of people are looking for wisdom, looking for knowledge. But the Bible says they became fools when they reject God. Verse 23, and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So what was written 2000 years ago, happening even today. What existed 6,000 years ago, happening today. Nothing's changed. Verse 24, therefore, because of that, therefore, verse 24, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature than the creator who is blessed forever. Do you know there is there are Hindus who worship serpents? Yeah. So serpent is a holy creature, and the Hindus uh, many Hindus worship serpent. There are Hindus who also worship swines. There are Hindus who also bow down before monkeys. There are Hindus who also bow down before rats. There are pictures of that on on the internet. 
so the bible addresses that god tells that because they ignored the calling of god he allowed them to their uncleanness to to in, in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of god for the lie and worshiped and served the creature and worshiped and served the creature including trees there are people who worship trees okay so there was a guy in india south india he worshiped donald trump's picture also on the internet you can find it because there are no commandments and there is a hotel or in india uh, where if you go as a guest they will worship you as a god why because you are bringing in money to them okay so verse 25 who exchanged the truth of god for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen verse 26 for this reason god gave them up to wild passions for even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman buried in their lust for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due so because humans men and women re rejected god rejected the holy spirit he allow, he allowed them to get into their uncleanness 28 and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge verse 28 so important and even as they did not like they did not like to retain god in their knowledge Today I noticed that in these days it's so difficult to talk about Jesus Christ to people in this country. You can talk about Jesus Christ in Hinduism, to Hindus, they'll be okay with that because Jesus is one of the 300 million gods, so they are fine with that. But if you want to talk about Jesus to people in the West, it's very hard. But Romans 128 tells because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting is it happening in this country now being filled with all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they are they are whisperers, backbiters, in other words, gossipers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Do we have that? A lot of evil things are being invented, right? All kinds of apps where people's time is drained away. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning untrustworthy unloving unforgiving unmerciful who knowing the righteous judgment of god that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them so not only are they involved in these things but when others do it they say good job so this is the state of affairs today in this world and as you can see whether it is transgenderism whether it is um, you know gender transitioning or, or same thing more or less both, both terms uh, whether it is uh, uh, by the way homosexuality is not condemned in hinduism uh, polygamy is not condemned in hinduism so the things that are condemned by the bible are not permissible are upheld in hinduism and that type of sensuality has entered here in the west and it is in christian circles as well and the reason is because the leadership in christianity has diluted the truths so therefore their flock 
had to accept what they are being offered. So that's why, and it's amazing the, the patience of God. It's amazing, right? God created us in His own image, male and female, and He has to see all of this. And unfortunately, it's going to get worse than this. Because when we read Genesis 6, it tells us, right, that God grieved in His heart that He created man. So the days of Noah were much worse than this. However, the Bible tells us that it's going to get worse than the days of Noah in our generation. So God is calling us and the whole world actually. God is calling us. So he says, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 22, free also, Flee also from youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. It's so easy for me to present this topic to you guys. Because we are all in the, in the same family. But I, I was thinking as I was working on this presentation, I was thinking, how do I present this topic? Or how do I talk about this to um, a transsexual a person, especially teenagers nowadays, they are given, uh, they are allowed to take uh, puberty blockers, right? So a girl can go and say, I'm not a man, I'm not a woman, I'm not a girl, I want to be a man, and they give it to them, and the parents, yeah, um, there are organizations that give them puberty blockers, and um, yeah, there are organizations, so there are, actually I'm, I'm in uh, contact with uh, a certain person like that, uh, she's actually 18 now, but I'm in contact with one of our team members to invite her to come to my next conference. And I'm also in contact with an organization. God impressed me and God impressed Don also to connect me with that organization which helps parents who have teenagers who have transitioned their gender, biological gender, from male to female or the other side also, uh, female to male also. Um, so this particular young girl that I am uh, not her directly, but uh, I'm in contact with the team. Um, so this particular young girl, she actually went through surgery and uh, they have removed her br both her breasts. And uh, she did that when she was 18, sorry, 15. When she was 15, because she believed she is in a wrong body. And there are men also, their testicles are also removed because they believe they are a woman and not men, I'm talking about teens, teen boys, children. Children. children, yes, children. So they have to live, and this girl says, okay with child yeah, Believe. yeah. So, so the girl says, I don't know if I can have kids. Even if I have kids, I don't know if I can breastfeed my child. And she's 18, yeah. Now, who's going to repair this damage? Nobody's there. She, she has to live the rest of her life. But even more bigger question is, as Seventh-day Adventist, how are we going to give them hope? Are we prepared to witness to them and give hope? Because uh, they call them the, themselves as detransitioning, or detrans, they call them, them the, themselves, detrans. So the girl, when she was 15, she thought she was a boy and they removed her breast, and then um, later on she realized that she did a mistake and she's, she's a D-trans and um, if she comes to our conference in Long Island, like how am I going to give her hope? That's the question I'm asking the Lord. And God reminded me this text, my grace is sufficient for thee, Amen. which means we all will be equipped to address this situation, to talk to these teens and young adults who have gone through this. So we are living in, a, as Walter always says, serious times, which means that we have to be very serious about outreach, about evangelism. So homosexuality, all of those things are there, 
but now satan has new varieties of things to damage what god has created and who created these all of us you know in in when we read psalm god was the one who created god was the one who created in the mother's womb and when they come out they are influenced now you are in the wrong gender let's cut off this part let's take out this part and live that way so we have a big response huge responsibility god has interested to us it's not just reaching anybody but reaching everybody which includes people in de trance and what about uh, people or teens who are considering to go through the through the surgeries how do we tell them don't do that in a nice way yeah we can pray for them and we can Corporate prayer. Yeah, I'm almost done actually. Hebrews uh, 12, 2. The author of confusion is Satan. But Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So our author and finisher of our faith is Jesus Christ. So we have to press forward looking up to him and shun the demonic forces from our lives, from our homes. Now this first part. Second part is we also have to share with others that he is their author and finisher as well of their faith. So we have a great responsibility. We have a battle ahead of us. It's an uphill battle. But if God, all things are possible. So may God be with each of us and give us divine wisdom, superior wisdom. As the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. So may we come to him and seek him humbly in humility. And that may he use each of us effectively and efficiently for his kingdom. Let's pray and close. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to discuss uh, some painful things, discuss disgusting things also. At the same time, Father, to look up to you for redemption and for hope and to realize your value, realize the comforts you have given to us, the simplicity of your gospel which you have given to us, your commandments that you have given to us, that as we practice them, as we apply your love in our personal lives, as we apply the faith you have given to us in our personal lives, as we obey your voice, and as we follow you as our good shepherd, that we will also, Father, invite others for the great supper, for the wedding supper that you have prepared for them, them also. So we pray that with all of this information, there's so much information that we looked into yesterday and today, that this information will not just be information, but this information will be used for soul winning. And that is the purpose of these meetings for soul winning. So Father, now that we are empowered and we are educated with the many aspects of the deceptions of the enemy, please use us mightily for your kingdom's sake. May this information be transformed for your glory's sake, for soul winning. And may we reach out to people with compassion, empathy, and love, and sympathy. And um, that people will know that the, your grace is available even for them. The time is at hand, but we still have hope, Father. So please anoint each of us this morning who are here, and each of us uh, who are on Zoom. We pray that you please anoint each of us, Father. 
that each of us will be used as your divine instrument and that the world will see your love and experience your love in us and through us. And we pray for the um, abundance of blessings upon Josiah Missions and Light Bearers SDA Church that their leadership team will continue to be steadfast in outreach, Father, that they will bring many souls into your kingdom. Use each of them mightily, Father, and may the leadership be governed by the Holy Spirit continually. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.